participants of the JCJ 2022 main examination and today is the last class of the online class uh, for this and uh, 26th is the examination day if it is not postponed uh, to my view. So without wasting the time, please uh, read what I posted on the screen. Participants. Welcome to the aspirants of JCJ 2022 online class 24 11 2022 evidence type direct evidence indirect evidence professor dr sahib sahib hussain professor of law sort mezwa tanzania Monza. Moza, Tanzania. Good, good. Now let us go to the point because the asterisk is put it over there. How far that I covered? Uh, that is the Kandula Bala versus state of AP that we dealt in our last class. And uh, in this class, that the continuation is uh, in Gurmeh Singh versus state of Punjab. The deceased has won the election against the accused. It is also seen that they don't have a good relation between. And they have always had a quarrel with each other. The reason behind the frequent quarrel was that the accused diverted dirty water stream towards the house of a deceased. The court observed that there were pending litigation between them and a dirty water stream induced a frustration between them. After the death of the deceased, the court concluded that the dispute related to the passage of the dirty water could be motive of the murder. So now motive, how we can make it out, uh, the case law very clearly says he was murdered because of the dirty water he was directing towards him and hence uh, it was, he was murdered. So that is the motive of the murder. Yes, the court observed that there was a pending litigation between them and dirty water stream induced the frustration between them and who frustrated and he killed the person who diverted that water, stream water towards uh, his house. After the death of the deceased, the court concluded that the dispute related to the passage of the dirty water could be the motive of the murder. Okay, now what is the motive there? What is the motive to murder him? Because he diverted the dirty water, it is the main dispute and that made him to murder. Okay, now in Rajendra Kumar versus the state of Punjab, the court held that the accused can only be convicted if the prosecution completely proves the motive and provide the supporting evidence to establish the commission of the offense by the accused. Could you consider the motive in the law of truth? Could you consider the motive in the law of crime? Participants, where the motive will be counted? In the both the places? Answer is yes. But in the love chart, we will base it on more why, what are the intention and motive of a person. If the motive or the intention may be good, but still a person has suffered, he should be compensated. So that is the difference we can find in, in the love chart under the law of contra, law of uh, evidence. But the law of evidence, especially, it we can consider it is a murder, it is a criminal case, so the base is beyond the reasonable doubt. But when it comes to the law of thought, it is based on the evidence that is a preponderance of the evidence. If a person is acquitted in in a criminal, criminal case, but doesn't mean that it is a bar for the civil case against him. Am I right? Verunath. Yes, sir. If a person is acquitted in a criminal case, that is not a bar to for the civil case. The reason yes, yes, is yes, yes, yes. criminal case is beyond the reasonable doubt, and the civil case is based on the preponderance of evidence. So now let us see the preparation. Regarding the preparation, as you said clearly, the two cases, the preparation is enough. Number one, waging war against the state. Number two, dacoity. Am I right? Yes, 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 yes. In the dacoity, there might be more than five, and generally, dacoity goes with the a dangerous weapons. 
Mm. So now the preparation, the Supreme Court of India interpreted a preparation as a word which denotes the action or the preparation of any act and also those components which are prepared. Preparation includes arranging the essential object for the commission of a crime or offense. Suppose if a person has purchased a hamlock, what is hamlock? Socrates was killed because of hamlock, a toxic substance, spelling H-A-M-L-O-C-K. Is it clear? Say yes. Yes. Yes, yes. So if a person has purchased the hamlock, there's a toxic substance to administer in the drinking, in the sipping of the milk, but he did not mix it, he kept it in his own pocket. Does it mean that his attempt for the committing an offence, preparation, mere intention is not the point. It should be in action. It should be made. Okay, he fixed, he mixed the hamlock, the toxic substance, in the in the milk, but he did not serve it. Can he commit an offence? Can you say attempt to attempt uh, to murder? But he did not consume it, the person to whom you want to serve. Okay, now let us presume that he served it. And the person who, instead of uh, sipping it, he kept on the table. Meanwhile, a cat came and uh, it is uh, made the milk to flow on the floor because it dashed against the glass. Or after getting the glass flown on the tro on the floor, the the cat, uh, uh, what I say, licked the milk, and he consequently died. Can you say it is the attempt to murder at the time? Accidentally, he did not drink it, but it is the attempt to murder. Can I can I can you will be filed under section three not seven of the IPC? When or not? We are keep, we are silent. Other participants have come, sir. Unko to puchiye, sir. Other participants, they don't know how to mute and unmute. It seems. Chandrasekhar, Siddha advocate, Valapula Siddha, Siddhu advocate, are you present? Present, sir. Yes, say at least. Did you hear my question, which I posed over there? Say yes or no. It is, uh, in my view, it is attempt to murder 307 because accidentally the cat is dashed against the glass and the glass fell down and the cat licked the milk and consequently it is died because the toxic substance is mixed in the milk. So, even that also comes under the preparation and it is, uh, in my view, it is an attempt to murder because thank God it is made the cat, uh, otherwise you would have to drink it or sip that uh, milk. So evidence tending to show that the accused had prepared for the crime, always admissible. Preparation does not express the whole scenario of the case, rather preparation only subject to the arrangement made in the respect of the committing an act. Further, there is no mandate that preparation is always carried out by it is more or less likely to be carried out. Either it is carried out, likely to be carried out. If it is carried out by accidentally, he did not drink it, but it fell down and the cat uh, licked the milk and consequently it is dried because the toxic substance is mixed in that milk. So it is directly we can say it is attempt to murder. And it is very difficult to prove preparation as there is no mandate that the preparation is always carried out for the purpose of committing any crime. It is mostly observed that the court draw into inference with the certain facts in establishing or ascertaining the preparation of the crime committed. So it depends upon the facts of the case and how much the preparation would be there and what is the very near to the committing an offence. So that will be counted here. So then one can say it's a preparation or not. But anyway, the preparation should be executed and the person is going to take it should be completed. But accidentally, he did not uh, liquid it. He, sorry, not liquid, he sipped it. But a cat sip, uh, liquid it, that is a different issue where we can say it is the attempt to murder. So, section 307 of the IPC will be attracted there. In Mohanlal versus Emperor, 
participants anyone can unmute and read this which i highlighted on the screen participants anyone can unmute and read what i highlighted on the screen bhagwati chandrashekar yes sir could you read it what i highlighted there yes sir proceed in mohanlal versus emperor the accused was charged for cheating as he was importing goods in karachi port from oka port without paying the proper custom duty as he made some arrangements with the customs department the prosecution showed enough evidence to prove the preparation by the accused in avoiding the import duties the court held that the act by the accused was wrong completely wrongful and are prohibited by the law hence the accused is liable for preparation see already he prepared he made a talk with the custom department and he has transported the goods from one port to another port and that means the preparation is completed and he avoided the paying the import duties at that instance we can say the preparation is completed the court held that the act by the accused was completely a wrongful act illegal act because he did not pay the import duties and prohibited by the law and hence the accused is liable for preparation is it clear say yes anyone can unmute and say yes <laughs> yes sir yes sir i appreciate i appreciate i told you the three statement if i don't listen the answer from you my hands are handcuffed my legs are fettered and my tongue is tied okay let me go further in appu versus state the four accused arrange a meeting to make essential arrangement for commence commencing the crime certain facts related to the objective of this scheduled meeting were admitted which showed preparation on their part the preparation was admitted clearly that it is an intention to commit the burglary and the accused were waiting for the night time to get the best opportunity to execute the preparation that means it is amount to preparation is it or not can anyone except venuna tell me what is burglary spelling is b u r g l a r y participants if you don't know you say pass on i will give the answer don't waste the time and today is the last I class speak i don't know okay any other participant Venuna, throw light on the burglary. आपने सवाल पूछा सब लोग गायब हो गया सर. नहीं गायब हो रहे यार देर बैठे हैं. They did not. They did not want to give the answer. Not गायब. Of course, there is a there is a problem of the internet also. There is another factor. Here, okay, I will give the answer. Burglary, especially, it will be done in the night. that is a breaking the house that is a very important factor breaking the house and stealing the things and that is called burglary that's why they say burglary burglary and the accused were waiting for the night waiting for the right to get the best opportunity to execute the preparation so breaking the house preferably night of course not necessarily night but breaking the house is a mandatory and is a one of the essential criteria in the burglary illegal entry illegal entry yes that's in another way we can say illegal entry by using the force by breaking the house the word they say house the, the uh, even even uh, a summer house is also sir in the sum, not summer house what do you say where we construct a house in a for, uh, in a farm farm house even a farm house also a house anything which is building which is constructed for the residence I mean, it may be residence or it may be factory or it may be for any purpose okay okay mm -hmm. so breaking that that particular thing is called burglary so now see the conduct section 8 of the indian evidence act also defines conduct conduct here means an external behavior of a person to check if the conduct is person is relevant to the incident then the court must establish a link between the conduct conductor conductor 
Which one is that? Conduct. Okay. Conduct. Uh, conduct. N-D-U-C-T. Now you pronounce the way that you want to make it out. Of a person who committed a crime and the conduct of the incident, the most important role of this party is that the relevant conduct must bring the court to conclusion of the dispute. If the court came to conclusion, then the conduct was previous or subsequent. It shall be checked properly by the court. It is very clear that the conduct is one of the very important evidence explained under the section 8 and such importance is only at the considered when this conduct is in direct form or otherwise if the conduct is recognized indirectly then it will lose its importance. So that means the conduct should be direct one and it is not recognized as indirectly and hence the, the lose its importance would be there. So conduct also counts to make it whether the person is liable or not for any offence which is made clear in the section 8. And suppose if it is a hardcore criminal is concerned, then easily is made that his conduct is not proper. I mean, to say he is having the criminal bent and several times that he did it, even though he was punished, because they are the habitual offenders. Am I right? Yes, yes. Okay, now let us give the in Bhamara was a state of um, MP, Madhya Pradesh. A person X was framing on his land. No, farming. sorry. Farming is farming. in land. Farming. Not framing. Farming is on his land. And seeing another person standing near to his place, he called the person for some conversation. After a few moments, the conversation turned into arguments and ended up to the fight, into a fight. And seeing such an activity, other other people came to the place of the incident to stop the fight, but subsequently the offender tried escaping, but the offender was caught by some other person. The court found that the conduct of the escaping of the offender was a relevant subsequent conduct. That means if he is not a guilty man, not an offender, not a preponderance of the offense, but he need not to escape. Am I right? Yeah. So escaping is a subsequent conduct made it relevant here in the fact. So in the Nagesh versus state of Bihar, it was held by the court if the first information given by the accused himself, the fact of his giving information is admissible against him as evidence of his conduct. Uh, oh, I did not get the point here. It was held by the court if the first information is given by the accused himself, Okay, the fact of his giving information is admissible against him as evidence of his conduct, either good conduct or bad conduct. Yes, I believe that is a good conduct only made him to come to the police station and give the FIR information and an application. Suppose if you want to escape it, if he has committed an offence, then he can do so also. That it shows that his conduct is very much evidence here, a good conduct. Am I right? If a person made an accident on the road and the person has taken the victim to the hospital and came to the court and came to the police station and gave the information that it is me who conducted, who made the accident and he was now in the hospital, take my FIR, take my, my statement. It shows he is a good conduct of a person. Otherwise, he may escape from there and run away. Without admitting a person, the victim in the hospital, please come into the police station to give the information, to give the ap application. Am I right? Say at least any one of them, yes. Yes, yes. Conspiracy. Conspiracy means few people come together to do an act with a common intention. Which is the section that deals with the common intention? 120B. Is it article? 34, essay section. 34. 34. I am appreciate. It is common intention. Yeah, it is a common intention. I am skin, but here we are discussing the common intention. So, so in the same context, 
A criminal conspiracy is the act of the least two or more persons to do an act which is not authorized by the law, i.e. it is an illegal act, or to do a legal act by illegal means. Even to do a illegal act by illegal means, it also comes under the purview of the offense. Criminal conspiracy is a kind of partnership in a crime, and every member of such partnership must join the partnership in mutual agreement for executing a common plan. Even a person standing on the gate to see whether any person are coming or not, even though he did not enter into the either the bank or the house for the robbery or for the making, uh, connecting the, I mean, uh, stealing the property, even that man also equally liable, even though he did not involved in the breaking of the almira and taking the things. But he is merely standing uh, in front of the gate to see whether any passerby is coming by or not. Even that man also having the same equal part like the person who has broken the Almira. Am I right? Yeah. Good. There are two relevant provisions which deals with the criminal conspiracy. That is, Section 120A, capital A of the Indian Penal Code. And is it Indian Penal Code? 120A or Article? Section. Criminal conspiracy. Articles, okay, articles are only used in Constitution of India. But uh, I read in the conspiracy. Oh, no, no. I mean, it is mistaken. It's a double geo party. comes in the 2021, 20, 1 and 2 and 3. Article 20. Yes, you are right. 120 capital E of the Indian Penal Code and Section 10 of the Indian Evidence Act talks about the things said are done by a conspirator. Then what is 34? Is the law of evidence? Is the IPC? Now let me check it. Why you should have to keep in the doubt? I didn't. I didn't get you. What is that you're saying? Section 34. We said, uh, is it of law of evidence or or IPC? There is IPC. There is IPC. Act done by several persons in furtherance of the common intention. When a criminal act is done by a several persons in furtherance of the common intention of all, each such person is liable in the same manner as it were done by alone. That is the 34 of the Indian Penal Code. Then what is 120, 120A? B. Capital A. In all civil proceedings, the parties to the suit and the husband and wife, any party suit can be competent. No, I should have to make evidence, I should remove. Yeah, this important. Is so both long pata nahi ye. Yeah. Yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. This even myself also I don't know. Even myself also. Oh, no, this 120 I, 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 I know all the 34 of the IPC. It's no, the no, It is the latest amendment because capital A is there. No, sir. Abhi jo apne Indian evidence ka dala tha na 120, wo wo nikaliye. No, wo alag hai, wo alag hai. That is that is between the wife and husband. That is what it is called. What evidence? It is okay. what communication. Okay, communication. That is. So definitely, the criminal conspiracy when two or more persons agree to do or cause to be done an illegal act and an act which is not illegal by the illegal means, such an agreement is a designated designated as a criminal conspiracy, provided that no agreement except the agreement to common. And an offense shall amount to a criminal conspiracy unless some act besides the agreement is done by one or more parties to such agreement in pursuance thereof. Explanation is it is immaterial whether the illegal act is the ultimate object of such agreement or is a merely incidental to that object. So 120A capital A is the latest amendment made to the Indian Penal Code that is inserted over there. And we know only the common intention in K34. Yeah, as you said, no, this 120, yeah, considering the commitment of the offense, IPC. And before that, uh, I, I made a different thing. The law of evidence, this is uh, what you have said, no. 120 in all civil proceedings, the parties to the suit and the husband and wife of any party to the suit shall be competent witnesses in criminal proceedings against any person, the husband or wife, such person respectively, shall be a competent witness. That is... Law of evidence, is it not? It is, say it is, because here it is given 120. Okay. So now, in this case, 
Yeah, please. Continue, continue, sir. So now we can say section 120 capital A and section 34 will deal with the common intention and especially 128 says the criminal conspiracy and 34 says the common intention. Am I right? So section 10 of the evidence act also talks about the things that were done by conspirator. Even at section 10 also deals, he said. So essential of the criminal conspiracy under section 10 of the Indian evidence laws. Number one, first bullet. There should be a reasonable grounds to establish a conspiracy. Number two, second bullet. There should be at least two or more percent to form a conspiracy. Third bullet, small bullet. There should be a common intention of all the conspirators. The fourth bullet, acts or statement of the conspirator. Conspirators. And the last bullet, the act or statement of the conspirator must be in reference to the common intention. So the criminal conspiracy comes under 120 capital A. Common intention comes in under the 34. And 10 also comes under Indian evidence regarding the criminal conspiracy. Common intention is a 34. Either it is a civil or criminal. Am I right? But the criminal conspirator is comes both the sections 120A capital A and 10. And the 10 is the Indian Evidence Act and 120A capital A is the IPC. So in state of Tamil Nadu versus Nalini, the court held that once any of the participants of the conspiracy execute the conspiracy, then his statement made by him cannot be used against other conspirator according to 10 of the Indian Evidence Act. I repeat, the court held that once any of the participants of the conspiracy execute the conspiracy, then his statement made by him cannot be used against other conspirators according to the section 10 of the Indian Evidence Act. That means the conspirator what he said, it not implied or applicable to the other conspirators because the case says it will not. Am I right? Because the ingredients are given over there. There should be a common intention of all the conspirators. Of course, all the conditions are fulfilled. If the above conditions are fulfilled, then we can say the other members are also conspirators. Otherwise, the one conspirator make such a statement that will not be against the another conspirator against the section 10 of the Indian Evidence Act. In Subramanian Swami versus A. Raja, the court in its judgment showed that anything which is doubtful cannot be considered as a legal proof and such a proof are insufficient to prove any criminal conspiracy because it doesn't have the, a bottom line, a case, a foundation or a local strand to say such a thing. A doubtful it is. The alibi we already just discussed. When a murder was there and he said B murdered him but at the time B is in London and the murder took place in Hyderabad or Maharashtra or Bombay. The word alibi is derived from the Latin word which means elsewhere. At the time of the murder he is elsewhere but in the statement it is given it so and so B or A anyone is murdered there. So section 11 of the Indian Evidence Act explains the concept fact not otherwise relevant becomes irrelevant and makes the provision as the defending ground for the accused. The simplest meaning of this section is a condition when the incident took place and the accused is charged for the incident then he may take the defend him on explaining the act that at the time of the incident he was not present at the location but he is somewhere elsewhere. Although the previously it was not relevant for the court to know that where he was at the investigation showed that the, he committed the crime but his explanation that he was not at the place of the incident make the irrelevant facts irrelevant fact. Because he was somewhere and that irrelevant fact he made the irrelevant fact here. And saying that he will be present at the scene of the 
offense and he was person who made such an offense or who murder the important part of the section 11 of the evidence act is that this rule is only accepted in the course of administration of evidence and no other statute provides such a rule so in the administration of the evidence only it can be used over there as a alibi at the time of the incident he was not there but he will be somewhere elsewhere the plea of alibi has been taken on the every step very first step first stage of the trial and must be proved without any reasonable doubt as the burden of proof is on the person who is taking advantage of section 10 that the plea of alibi if a person says that i am somewhere or elsewhere it is he who has to prove it am i right participants yes, yes, yes. are you there i am there i am there <laughs> i appreciate you will be there till the end of this session today is the last date and the last class now let us see the what is the essential of plea of alibi the first bullet there must be an offense punished by punishable by law the second small bullet the person taking the defense of section 10 should be accused of that particular offense punishable by law the third bullet the defense must be satisfactory and beyond any reasonable doubt on the last bullet the defend must be backed by evidence supported by the evidence that he is elsewhere at the time of the incident in lakhan singh at pappu can you say alias pappu lakhan singh alias pappu versus state of ncit of delhi a plea of alibi cannot be compared with the plea of self defense although both the plea is to be taken on the very first instance of the court proceedings so alibi is different and the plea of self defense is different so that is made in the lakhan singh alias pappu versus the state of ncit of delhi yes you cannot take to how can you take to when you say that you are elsewhere how can you take self defense then yeah that's why they say that's they right. are both yeah. separate if you are taking self defense that means you are physically present there yeah self defense in the sense uh, defended himself self defense means he self defended himself a uh, defended himself or the property that means your presence is there but anyway these are the two defenses available one defense is alibi you will use elsewhere the other defense would be there yes i was there but to, to make the self defense i did that work if i don't kill him that he is going to kill me with the ak 47 but how did he kill he killed with the revolver before he triggered it he triggered first so in shahabuddin and another was the state of assam once the court is in doubt with respect to the plea of alibi and the accused does not give any substantial explanation to support his sta- statement under section 313 of the cpc then the court is authorized to conclude a negative or not a positive inference against the accused so positive inference cannot be made but the negative inference can be made against the person who made such a statement in jitendra kumar was a state of haryana the court not believing the plea of alibi as the accused did not provide the sufficient supportive evidence for establishing the defense and the court supported the case from the prosecution side because a person who wants to say that he is elsewhere he should have to prove in the court of law beyond the reasonable doubt of a prosecution or to the satisfaction of the court that he is elsewhere then only it can be taken as a defense of the alibi otherwise the court give in the favor of the prosecution side confession section 23 of the evidence act defines the word confession is an admission of a crime by a criminal or suggesting the inference that he committed a wrongful act confession can be made at any time during the trial if you make the confession to the court or to the police station whether punishment will be lowered punish, punishment is less any confession made to the police is not valid that's a giving conviction the court in the witness box 
that depends on the judge can the conversion will be given by the writing the affidavit that you can do at the time any punishment will be lowered down lessened no 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 unless he pleads guilty and he says okay i am confessing to kind no, of i did the act in the provocation uh, but unless he turns hostile we still helping the state in getting the <laughs> other accused punished in such cases the host uh, okay hostile witness can uh, get as a punishment right that is the state will recommend that's sense but a good be behavior of a convicted person he can be released on the october 2nd that is uh, not mandatory but in the gujarat case see so many people are uh, released that is, that is only that is only done after 14 years of imprisonment but i don't know how it's done in gujarat case because uh, normally these kind of things are done after 14 years jisko uh, life in prison milta hai na yeah uh, so only in such cases or oh, 14th august 15th uh, 15th august for 14th uh, second 15th october august 26th of january ko release kar dete when Now, wait, whatever the, dates the government decides when you say the 14 years does it count day and night seven years no 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 seven years means seven years no day and night so well, day and night will be not considered as 24 12 years 12 year 12 hours is considered as a one day no 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 20 agar 12 saal usko saza mila to 12 saal usko rehna padega means total one day and one night is equal to one counted as one. 24 hours is equal to one day agar 12 saal saza diya to 12 saal rukna usko jail ke andar iska matlab kya hua wahi hua na sir ki subah raat usko udhar rukna padega It is not कि ऐसे नहीं होता कि बारह साल सजा दिया तो छह महीने छह साल के बाद बेच देंगे भाई तुम सुबह बारह घंटा था फिर रात को भी बारह घंटा था ऐसे थोड़ी होता है सो इट इज फोर्टीन ईयर्स मीन फोर्टीन ईयर्स अंदर रहना पड़ेगा उसको नो ऑप्शन ओनली आफ्टर फोर्टीन ईयर्स विद इफ टू मेक एन जेलर शुड मेक एन एप्लीकेशन टू द प्रेजिडेंट और टू द गवर्नर ऑन इज गुड फेथ तभी उसका रिड्यूज होगा okay. every year every year they give list to the state government and to the central government mean a jailer will give yes the jailer will give on good conduct agar kisi ka acha conduct hai jiska 14 saal ho gaya hai acha hai then they say okay that was jailer recommendation now let us go to the palvinder kaur was state of punjab the supreme court observed two aspects which are firstly the definition of a confession confession is that accused must either admit the guilt or admit subsequently all or few facts which constitute the offence on the other side a mixed statement which also contains some confessional statement will still lead to an acquittal is no confession does a statement that contains a self exculpatory matter which is of true would negate the matter of the offense cannot i want to a confession so they clearly made a mixed statement which also contains some confessional statement will still lead to an acquittal is no confession does a statement that contains a self exculpatory exculpatory matter which is, if true would negate the matter of offense matter or offense cannot i want to a confession so what is with no intention no self explanatory no try to be acquittal if he made such a confession then he cannot be amount to confession then how the confession should be it is the true fact without hiding without coloring the matter and confessing to the court either in the form of the affidavit or by standing in the witness box so depending upon the 
how the confession made and what are the things he wants to make the confession. So the court will find it whether it is a confession or not confession. So that is made in the Palvinder Kaur versus state of Punjab. In Nishi Kanja versus state of Bihar, the Supreme Court opined and substantiated its argument on the support of the English authorities that it is the discretion of the court and there is nothing wrong with relying on some specific part of the confession and rejecting the other part. So, when the court feels that the first part is the right confession and the second part is inadmissible confession. So, they can sever the statement which will be considered, which will be rejected. So, magistrate duty of recording the confession. A judicial confession is made to the magistrate during the judicial proceedings or at the time of the court trial. What is, we say, the judicial proceedings or at the time of the court trial? What is the difference between the two? Verunath. Proceedings are civil proceedings. And Which trial one? is a criminal one. Okay, 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 okay. Now I got it. Judicial proceeding means civil proceedings. At the time of the court trial means criminal proceedings. Am I right? Trial is the criminal case is the trial. Right, right, right. And other, other can be as a suit. Or we can yes. say proceeding, judicial proceedings. So now judicial yes. confessions are very relevant and are considered as one of the most important type of the confession, confession as they are directly recorded by the court. Section 164 of the CRPC empowers a magistrate to record a confession in his presence and such confession will hold enough evidentiary value that the confessor can be held guilty. Rajasthan High Court has also held that the confession of an accused must be free voluntary and genuine that nothing is left with the prosecution to prove any fact that then only the person can be convicted on the basis of confession. When the confession made, when the convicted, uh, just I told you, the conviction would be the same like as if the trial has taken place or because he convicted without the following the trials as judicial proceedings and to end the case can it will be incentive or any rebate is given in the punishment I mean to say lesser punishment is this the discretion of the court or as if the trial is ended even though he confessed the same amount of the punishment as envisaged are spelled by the particular section of the Code or Act. So, dying declaration. The word dying declaration means any statement written or verbal of the relevant facts made by a person who is dead or it is the statement of a person who had died explaining the circumstances of his death. Can the dying declaration made by the signs, by the gestures, is amount to the dying declaration? Uh, that's a little bit technical question. So the, with the hands he said, Keep the, yes, that is concerned at, at the throat and he said like this and he said he yes, yes, my is. my throat yes that is that is a die it is treated as dying declaration only the five minutes are left sign, sign, sign language people who cannot speak yeah will they communicate suppose his throat sign language is uh, in severed now he, he cannot speak, so he uses the hands to see that and he point out at a photo and say that this man has uh, made the sign language, he made it cut my or severed my larynx, that is a throat. 
ya sound box Hmm. Then sekarang sudah ada uh... even gestures like a a a horde even uh, there is one case lah I don't know whether it is the right case R versus Abdullah where it is made by the science and the court considered it is a dying declaration in the law of evidence yes 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 I studied I am sure that even still I could remember the science. We can make it clarification. Why will be beating around the bus? Bush. R versus Abdullah. Abdullah. Dying declaration. No. Q and Empress versus Abdullah. Under the English law, a dying declaration when consisting of words would be admissible only as an exception to the general rule. They made it. Section 32, subsection 1 of the Indian Evidence Act. And where Kuhn versus Abdullah is made clear. Section 32, class 1 of the Indian Evidence Act, what dying declaration means? A statement written or verbal relevant facts made by a person who is a dead. It is a statement of a person who died explaining the circumstances of his death. So, they have given the clear explanation here, dying declaration. But uh, there is a presumption also there. This is based on the maxim, Nemo Maritaris. Is someone tormentary? That means a man will not meet his maker with lie or his mouth. Our Indian law recognizes this fact that a dying man seldom lies or truth sits upon the lips of a dying man. It is an exception yeah. to the principle of excluding the hearsay evidence rule. Here, the person victim is the only eyewitnesses to the crime, not an exclusion of his statement would tend to defeat the end of justice. Section 32 of Indian Evidence Act deals with the cases related to the person who is dead or who cannot be found. So, it is say a dying man will not lie. On the dying man, the truth is on his lips. This is the maximum that we can make it out. So, concept of dying declaration has evolved from the legal maxim that is say, Nemo Maritaris Presumentor Mentri, a man will not meet his maker and lie in his mouth, although it may sound impractical, but our law has adapted this concept and function accordingly. So, section 32, subsection 1 specifically deals with the concept of dying declaration in respect of the cause of death and is assumed that such a statement are relevant even whether the person who made them was not at the time when they are made. So another case, Lagukar like Ram versus State of Rajasthan, the Apex Court defined the dying declaration in a way that where a statement is made by a person in that threat, if his death or as to any circumstances which cause threat or result into his death, and when the cause of death comes to an question, the statement made by him are admissible as an evidence, such a statement in law are compendiously called dying declaration. Even made to the death or at the time of the death and is suspected that he is going to die because of the threat and which is made, then the compendiously called under the law as a dying declaration. So at any time it will stop and uh, let you compliment each other I am very much thankful to the SR Venunath, who is a practicing advocate in Bombay High Court and subordinate courts and to enlighten certain matters, though I am academically sound, but uh,
सारे जहां से अच्छा हिंदू सता हमारा जय हिंद जय हिंद